Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today, I'm going to bring you a little project. You guys asked for it, and so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Now, I'm only going to show you one half of this project today, as you guessed by the title, we are going to be making tongs. Now, what I want to illustrate here is if you can make one half, you can make the other half of the pair of tongs. But really what I want to take and illustrate, I'm only going to go through the process of one half of the gels of tongs. There's a thousand other videos on YouTube of making tongs. I just want to give you my input on it. And the part of tong making that is not discussed. It's usually not very well explained. And so I hope to do that today as my channel is a long, boring, talking channel, which you guys love, which is great for me. So, by the way, that was the hint for people with short attention spans to run. Run as fast as you can. So, what are we talking today? Let's get down to the real nitty gritty of this. Tong making. The first step in making a good pair of tongs is the correct stock size selectment. You do not want to select stock that is too small for making tongs, as in that 3-8 square bar. And you do not want to select stock, especially when you're first starting out, that is round. And we'll get into that over at the anvil of why and why not. But I'll get into it a little bit now while I'm at it, because I'll probably repeat it. The reason why you don't want something round is it's very hard to index on a round bar a square, keeping everything square and in plane. To keep everything exactly 90 degrees, it is very hard to index that on a round bar. If all you have is round bar, you need to square up a section of the bar first and then start with the square section and forge out the tong blank. This is purely my opinion on that. The next thing, so we're not going to use round, so let's get that guy out of here. So now that you've selected, you say, okay, I'm not going to use round because Roy told me so. He said that that's not going to be very helpful to me. Now what? Well, right here I've laid out three different sizes of material. Starting at this end, this is 5 8 inch thick material. I will try to research the metric and put it, you know, put a little thing somewhere in here that says what that is uh, in metric system. I'm just doing the imperial. This is half inch square. And then this is three eighths inch square bar. Now out of these three materials, I'm going to give you which one I believe is the best for overall tong making. Now, I believe for making, top, for making tongs that will hold material up to one inch, or 25 mil, I think it's 25 mil, uh, square or round stock, 5 8 inch thick material is what you want to go to. That is your minimum. That is going to be a minimum of 5 8 inch thick square material. Now, say you mostly work with smaller work, or you do things like really light or small thin blades, <coughs> excuse me, you can get away with using half inch thick material. So I would say half inch thick material is good for anything from quarter inch, round or square, all the way up to about, I would say half inch, about the same thickness here. I would say it's good all the way up to half inch. You can always have a heavier jawed tong that can forge smaller material it's very hard to make a light jaw tong forge heavy material. It's, it just doesn't work out. The tong gets weak. So half inch is good all the way up to half inch and all the way down to quarter inch or as small as you like. And then three eighths, get it out of here. Don't use three eighths material. Three eighths material does not have enough mass to hold anything but a gnat in the jaws after you're done forging it. I've done this multiple times figuring out tongs for myself and anytime I've tried to shortcut and use 3 8 inch thick material 
it was just a big wasted effort because everything gets so paper thin that you can't use it to squeeze anything. So do not use 3 8 inch thick material. So that leaves us with our two options. Half inch bar for anything up to half inch. 5 8 bar from anything from half inch all the way up to one inch. And then you need to use an appropriate size stock which I would suggest 7 8 inch or a 1 inch bar, about 25 mil. I think I'm saying that right. Excuse me, guys that live across the pond. Uh, you know, Graham, you, got, you can correct me on it again. I'm still working on my metric. I hope to be better at this someday. But 1 inch square material would be the absolute minimum for anything 1 inch and up. Uh, and then obviously, if you're getting into great big billets, you're going to have to go larger than one inch material uh, to forge the tongs out of. But that's out of the scope of this video. So today, as far as an economy of time, I'm going to go ahead and forge a small pair of tongs or one half of out of this here bar stock, half inch square. Now, that being said, your stock choice is going to matter a lot to you depending on your strength capabilities and what you can do. Half inch is obviously easier to move than 5 eighths. 5 eighths stays hotter longer than what half inch does and gives you more wiggle room for thicknesses and stuff so you don't thin the jaw too much. I personally prefer... 5 8 inch thick material. I think it's a great starting size for anybody who wants to make tongs. It gives you enough meat there that if you need to grind or file it later, you can. That is my suggestion. Next point, and I'm going to try to get into this as quick as I can. How much material do you need for a decent pair of tongs? Because it's all well and fine to talk about the bar stock size, but how long do you need it? Well, it is my suggestion that you don't work with a blank that is any smaller than 8 inches long in 5 8 square. If it's half inch square, I suggest you go about 12 inches long as a blank for your material. That is just what I found that works best for the type of reins and things that I do. I draw out my reins because I have a power hammer. I did it before, even when I didn't. I did it at the anvil. Um, I just like a solid piece, if I can. There's cases where you can get into welding them and everything else, and we'll do we'll do some other tongue videos on that in the future. But eight inches is the minimum I feel, and twelve inches on half inch square. So the best thing to do is to be able to have two fairly long pieces that are like two feet long or so that you can have in the fire simultaneously. That is actually the best method. So this way you can work on one process and go to the next one and so on and so forth and take them all up to the same process. We're not going to do that today. I'm just going to go ahead and get this one heated up and I'm going to forge the jaw portion here so you guys can see my method of doing that. Without further ado, let's get over there to the hand anvil and start a hammering. Okay everybody, real quick before we get to hammering. This is where I'm going to take, an, take a moment to toot my own horn or to validate myself so to speak in one of my previous videos when I had talked about sharp corners and sharp edges on anvils and my theory behind dressing an anvil or rather you should not take and dress an anvil out with big radius edges. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this out there, and this is probably going to hurt a few guys' feelings, but here, here's a simple thing. It is very hard to do good tong work on really radiused edges, and the reason for that being, especially when you're a beginner, is the fact that you need to create your first initial set down and progressive set downs of material and isolate very specific sections of material as you go along. That is very difficult to do on a crowned surface as it wants to skate or slide off where you originally have made your set down. So there's a few ways that you can overcome this. If you have 
an anvil that already naturally has a radius shoulder, try to find a sharper place on your anvil to take and set down your initial shoulders. Now some guys will say, well, won't that create cold shuts or hot shuts and eventually breaking off? Yes and no. It will only create a cold shut or have a problem there if you need to take and re-go over that or you take a double bite on the material. That's when you're going to have problems with that. Now, having some radius, like as I've said before, I, go, I don't go any uh, less than you know, a good maybe eighth inch radius down to maybe sixteenth or whatever. These are smoothed off, but it's by hammering. You know, I mean, they're not razor sharp and you're not going to cut yourself on these edges. But it is very hard, like I said, on a radius edge to get those first initial set downs. So if you do not have an anvil that has any sort of sharp edges on it whatsoever, I suggest you make yourself a block that fits in the hardy hole of the anvil that has the edges or correct edges that you need. No more than a quarter inch radius on those edges is would be my suggestion for tong making. Now this is going to allow you the ability to lay off very specific sections of stock because the anvil bites into the material and won't allow it to scooch around on you and make double hits and things like that. Tongs are progressive forging, and so that means they get forged in steps, and they need very specific dimensions in order for them to look right. This is where sh sharp edges are superior. And when I say sharp edges, these are not razor sharp once again. You don't want it where it's cutting or galling the material, but to have really good edges on an anvil, is very helpful. Like I said, if you don't have that, get a block, and this will greatly improve your ability to be able to make a pair of tongs. So that's a quick tip. Let's get to hammering. Okay, everybody, I'm about to bring out this material. I'm making sure I'm in shot here, yeah. The first thing we're going to do is we're gonna set on an inch of material. This is half inch square, so put a cube and then double that cube onto the anvil surface. The very first critical part is that first initial blow. We are going to use a half on half off blow and we are going to we are going to smite it with everything we've got. We want to create a really nice first initial set down and you're just going to give it one blow. I'm making you guys nervous, ain't I? Anyways, we're just going to give it one blow. You're going to stop, you're going to find that shoulder again, and then you're going to drive it again, stop, make sure that shoulder is still set, and then go ahead and continue driving and working the piece. So I'll pull this out. It's good and hot. We're going to set on a cube. There's a cube. And then two cubes of material, and we're going to take a big blow. Now. There we go. Just like that. Now let's straighten her up here. Show you how that's done. So, once again, every time we'll find that same spot on the anvil. Okay. So there again, guys and gals. There's our first set down. Now, we can continue to work this down even more. We're not right now at this point in time. We just want to take and get that first initial set down, okay? The next part, okay, we are going to take and go to the other, we're going to flip it full 180. We're going to go to the other side of the anvil. And then we're going to go ahead and create the other set down. Now I do this a little differently than the left, left, left technique. Now for those of you who don't know, you hammer it down here, you go up and across the anvil, you hammer down the shoulder there, then you turn it left, and then you hammer down that boss area there. I do it a little differently. 
I forge this portion of the boss, flip it full 180 degrees, go across the edge of the anvil, forge the other portion of the boss, then I bring it back and do this part. And there's a reason for that, and we'll show you that in just a second. Okay, now we're all the way on the other side of the anvil. We're gonna set just a little more than a cube of material over. Half on, half off, blow again. And then just work that back, okay? Now I'm not gonna do this in real time. I just wanna set this up so people can see it. So now we essentially, the reason why I do this, this way, especially for beginners, here, 180, here is now you have a very specific defined boss measurement. This right in here, this point from here to here is very specific. It's not going to change now. So if you're doing this on two pieces at once, you can go that much material, even if you got to use center punch marks, and then you know that you're going to lay off a certain amount just a little more, like a cube and a half of material, and that's what you're gonna set down for your reins. Now both your jaws are gonna be exactly the same. You've locked that in. Now obviously you can make some hit miss hammer blows and change all that, but we're not gonna do that. We're going to continue on here. As you can see, this is widened out. We're gonna dress that out. As soon as we turn it and do that standard, you know, classic, 45 degree angle at the anvil, and we set down the boss area and material. We'll be able to take and work that out. So those are the first two steps that I do. So now we'll take another heat on this. By the way, I could have done all this in one heat, but that's not really the point. The point is to take, if you are a beginner at it, is to understand dividing the material properly first. Once you get it properly divided, then you'll be able to make whatever shape tongs and as fast as you like. But this is the first steps that I take to make tongs if I'm teaching somebody new. Next step, we'll go ahead and work down the boss area. Okay, now we got it good and hot. We're going to go ahead and turn this to the right or to the left. Doesn't really matter, however you want to do it. I'm going to the right. I'm going to go about 45 degree angle, half on, half off blow again. And then work that back, and then here again. And now we're essentially just drawing out the rain. Always keep it on the anvil at the same juncture. Make sure you find and register that corner. Always register that corner before you hammer on it again. That'll stop all of this double cutting stuff going on. Now, at this point, this tong blank could be done. There's our boss area, there's our bit, there's our rain area. We could be done at this point right here. If you were doing welded reins, you could cut this off, scarf it and weld on your reins now, or however you like. The point in doing this exercise, and this is just my method of doing this, the biggest point for you to gain from anybody who's making tongs is it is essentially just a division of stock, progressive forging in steps. As long as you can achieve progressive forging in various steps, that is all you need to make a pair of tongs. So I'm gonna take one more heat, draw this down a little bit, dress the boss, and then we're gonna punch it for our rivet at a later date. So I'll go ahead and do that in this next heat and talk a little bit as I go. Okay, last part of this, I'm gonna go ahead and not set the tongs like this, 
but I'm going to roll it a full 180, set where the jaw end is up, and I'm going to create a set down here. And you say, Roy, why are you doing that? Well, quite simply, we need this part here to be the same thickness, as square as it can be, to the same thicknesses. And if you don't set, you don't want to make a big taper going into this because then the jaws don't line up and it's just goofy and weird. You want this to be able to have the same thickness here as it is here. Now it's very hard to do and that impedes you when you've got a bar like this and you're already at an angle and you're trying to work this thing and you're trying to cut your heel down like that. It's very difficult. So that's why we're not doing that part. We're just wanting to get this nice and squared up where it needs to be. Voila. Like so. Now, you can go as far on the forging as you'd like at this point. Now, I do not... I find it's easier to go ahead and dress up any Miss Hammer blows or anything like that at the final stages when you assemble the stuff. So before you assemble it, you're going to require a little bit of filing and stuff and sanding to get everything fitted nicely. Go ahead. Um, the better you are at making them, the less you'll have to do. They should just plop right together. But you'll do all that as finish work for this bit. And then with both halves, you put them together, they make a good set of tongs, voila, you're done, okay? So then you do all your adjustment of getting this all square and perfect and lining your jaws and then fixing whatever you're doing in them. Like I said, I've done a lot of other videos on how to make tongs. I'll try to put the links to those in the description and at the end of this video here. Uh, and there's a lot of other videos on YouTube that you can watch about making tongs, V-bits, and things of that nature. I just wanted to show you some of the in-depth portions, the things that aren't talked about in tong making videos. I don't really care what style of tongs you make. The process is all the same. You start with these processes right like that. So... Heat this back up. I'll go ahead and punch and drift that hole to the appropriate size. And then that'll be the conclusion of this video. Okay. Now we got this. We're going to take advantage because we got this shoulder here. And we're going to register it on the anvil. That allows this to be nice and flat. And we're going to go ahead and find our center. Take your time with this. going to drive that all the way down. Find the anvil. We'll flip it over. Go to the other side of the anvil. Press that flat. Find our center again. And knock our slug out. Voila. Just like that. You've got a hole, and you're good to go. Now, you can keep drifting this as large as you like. Um, you can do it at the edge of the anvil, however you see fit. I suggest a straight pin and run it through this side. That way you can go to the Pritchell hole of the anvil or to the hardy hole. Across the edges of the hardy hole, to drift that open a little bigger, and that'll get you done there. So... Move my hammer here. Um, so, as you can see, that's one half of a jaws of tongs. Now, next thing to take and point out. We'll go ahead and point this out real quick to everybody. You'll notice I got a sharp corner here and I got a sharp corner here. What to do with those? Well, in principle and in function, they don't mean anything. You don't have to focus on trying to get this perfectly round in this section. That is an aesthetic thing more than a functionality thing. 
These can be square here and here because they're not doing anything. They're not gripping anything. They're just not doing anything. Now, this sharp corner here, I would alleviate with a file a little bit. And maybe in here, you might want to dress that out with a file just a hair. That way, you won't get any stress cracks in the future if you did a bit poor job of forging. But those are my suggestions for that. The square part doesn't matter. It could be round, it could be square, it could be oval. You just want them to look the same. So, in my opinion, this makes a perfectly fine set of tongs, and I make all my own tongs. So hopefully this video helped somebody out out there. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section down below. I greatly appreciate everyone who stuck around this long to watch the rest of this video. Thank you guys so much. And uh, God bless you all, and we'll catch you on the next one.